Hey y'all, Matt here from Super Niche Sites. In the video today, I'm going to be comparing ChatGPT Plus versus the regular ChatGPT that is free for everyone. I just recently got access to it. ChatGPT Chat, uh, Plus is rolling out to people all across the United States first is what they've said, and then it's going to be rolling out to additional people on the wait list in countries around the world. And so I got access to it. I went ahead and upgraded just so I could show you guys exactly what you do get when you upgrade to ChatGPT Plus. I'm gonna be doing some side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm gonna compare the speed that you will get with ChatGPT Plus versus the original ChatGPT. I'm going to be comparing the results, which is a question that a lot of people have, like, are the results better? Are they about the same? Um, so I'm going to be comparing those side by side with regular ChatGPT with ChatGPT+. And then I'm also going to be giving my opinion on whether I feel like it's worth it to upgrade for the $20 a month subscription or not. Before we get to that, please be sure to hit the like button and then also subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, what exactly do you get with ChatGPT Plus? So I'm here on the OpenAI website and it just gives you the brief exactly what you get for it. Essentially you get general access to ChatGPT even during peak times, which there's not really a way to test that. However, if you are consistently getting um, timed out, network errors, those sorts of things with ChatGPT, or if you use it um, during the times where it seems to be overloaded a lot of time, then probably paying the $20 a month might be worth it to you. Then you also get the faster response times. So we're going to test side by side here in a second. And then you also get priority access to new features and improvements. So that part probably isn't, isn't uh, not going to matter too terribly much to most people. However, um, it is something that they say that they will give you. They are still going to have free access to the original chat GPT plus or original chat GPT, not plus as well. Um, so you don't have to worry about that going away, at least for now. They, of course, they could change their mind in the future. So what I've done here is I've got uh, chat GPT plus open on this one. And then I have the original chat GPT open on the side by side here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a speed test and test chat GPT plus with chat GPT for the exact same queries to see what they come up with and how much faster it is. All right, so for the speed test, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type the same thing into ChatGPT Plus as I'm doing in ChatGPT. And let's do give me 10 examples of the best types of food to make for a Thanksgiving meal. All right, I'm going to copy that over to here. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, original chat GPT. So that's the one here on the right first. And then I'll start chat GPT plus. So I will go there up. I've got give spelled wrong as well, which doesn't help. And change that. And I do have to pull this over a tiny bit so I can get the start button. There we go. All right, so I've got that there, and I'm going to start that one, and then start that one. Okay, so ChatGPT Plus is here on the left. As you can see, it's already started, it's already going, and it's just giving me the 10 popular dishes, and it is done before the, oh, almost done, it get a note at the end, um, before the original ChatGPT actually even got started. Um going to scroll through here and we're done okay so I just gave those 10 um, this is a suggestion and there's no definitive best list okay that's on chat GPT plus as you can see it's considerably faster let me move this over to the side a little bit so that way it doesn't cut it off any all right and let's do it let's just go to give me a recipe for the first one okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna run it off of the um, original query that it did so this should be roasted turkey on both of these as you can see there's a few variations but it's pretty similar even in the content that it put put out we have cornbread um, on this one that we don't have on this one so we have dinner rolls dinner rolls pumpkin pie apple pie or other fruit based pie it didn't give that on here okay so we're gonna do the original one first and then we're gonna do chat GPT plus and as you can see uh, chat GPT plus is considerably faster in regards to how fast it moves now I am recording this. It is currently 1130 here in Arizona. That's where I live, where I'm recording this. So it could be the time of day as well. Chat G the original chat GPT without the plus does take a little bit longer, maybe because it's a little bit overloaded or whatever this time of the day. If I was to be recording this, say the middle of the night, uh, the original chat GPT would probably be a bit faster. But as you can see here, chat GPT plus is considerably faster 
at creating, giving the ingredients and then giving the instructions. All right, and ChatGPT is still working, still working, still working. All right, as you can see, you can also look, you can compare these side by side while chat, chat, the original ChatGPT is still working. And you can see a lot of the things are super similar. Okay, so we will cover that in just a minute um, in regards to comparing side by side. I'm going to have it do some things that are a little bit um, more difficult than just a recipe, those sorts of things. However, it's really interesting that um, ChatGPT is breaking it out into more steps here. Um, the instructions on this one is only eight, uh, whereas this one is considerably longer on the original ChatGPT. I'm not sure why. Ingredients, uh, two stocks, two cloves. Okay, so it gave four cloves, two tablespoons of butter. On this one, it added um, flour, which it didn't have on this side. Chicken broth, it didn't have on this side. White wine, it didn't have on this side. So that's why the instructions are gonna be a bit longer. But as you can see, it was considerably faster on the original plus one. Okay, so let's go over here and let's go new chat. We're gonna do new chat on here as well. As you can see, this one has the upgrade plan available um, because I haven't upgraded on this one. So we'll close out of that, close out of that. Let's just do something. Give me a blog post on whether a, oops. Give me a blog post on whether AI will kill, will not kill, destroy, blogging as a business okay so we're going to do that the reason why i changed it out of kill was because chat gpt can sometimes be a little uh, finicky okay so we're going to start the original one we'll start the chat gpt plus All right and we will see which one is faster chat gpt plus again is on the left and then the regular one is on the right. I even had a misspelling. I had the I at the beginning of give me a blog post, um, but ChatGPT Plus is currently on its third paragraph. The original one is currently still on its second. Um, finished its third paragraph just while Chat, the original ChatGPT was finishing its second paragraph. And we're just gonna let it run here see how much content we get for both of them all right so this one is done chat GPT plus and this one is still continuing um, still has looks like one more paragraph we'll see how many paragraphs we got out of this so we got one two three four five six paragraphs from the original one and it looks like it's going to be about the same on, on the original chat GPT. All right. Yep. And it's done, type, done typing because it adds the, the title at the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So the exact same number of paragraphs. And as you can see, chat GPT was considerably, or sorry, chat GPT plus the one that you're paying the subscription for is considerably faster just in how fast it, it uh, gets you the information, how fast it types out the information. It's still not instantaneous. Truthfully, if I'm paying $20 a month, I, I would like for me to put in the information and it to just go boom, spit it out as quickly as possible. Now, obviously it, it's going to take it a while to come up with the information, but if you use like the OpenAI background, the playground um, on OpenAI's actual website, um, typically what it'll do is it'll push out the content much faster than this. So I'd prefer if ChatGPT Plus, I'm paying $20 a month, put it out considerably faster as in as soon as it was ready, it's, it would just plop it on the page rather than typing it out or giving it the look of typing it out. But it's still considerably faster than the original. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to give it some different styles, give it some different ideas, and we'll see what the content looks like in comparison between the paid version and the free version and if there's any, di any difference between those two. So I've got the prompt already entered in here. As you can see, I didn't want to take the time to do it um, while I was recording because nobody wants to see me type. But I've got, uh, give me 10 things to do in Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I currently live. 
Uh, so we'll see what kind of information it comes up with on both of these. Go into great detail describing each of these 10 things, include personal language and stories about times where you did these specific things, right in the style of George R. R. Martin. Okay, so I added styles, I added personal language, I added, I asked it to give me personal stories, and then um, go into great detail. So we will see, obviously the original one is going to be slower as is was shown in all of our tests. But let's see what it comes up with in regards to content, if it actually gives us these 10 things, and if it's worthwhile. Okay, so first thing it's uh, ChatGPT Plus is saying is visit, visit the Desert Botanical Garden. Second thing is hike Camelback Mountain. Third thing is tour the Herd Museum. Fourth is explore the Phoenix Art Museum. And it's giving about a paragraph for each, which is not the best in the world, but all right. Uh, walk through the Japanese Friendship Garden, visit the Phoenix Zoo, uh, take a hot air balloon ride. Okay, as you can see here, the ChatGPT, the original one on the right, and the ChatGPT Plus on the left, both are giving pretty much the same answers. So if you're using this to write blog posts, man, you really, really shouldn't just be using this, this generic, because if somebody puts in the same general prompts as you, like give me 10 things to do in Phoenix, Arizona, they're gonna get the same, pretty much the same things out. So I've got, um, ChatGPT Plus is just considerably faster. As you can see, it's got all 10 done. Um, so we've got uh, Walk Through the Phoenix Art Museum, which it had. Scenic Drive Through South Mountain Park. Okay, so it's got Explore South Mountain Park. And truthfully, ChatGPT, the original one, is giving a little bit more detail. Um, visit the Phoenix Zoo. It had this as well on the left. Explore Papago Park. Let's see. I don't think it had that one. Nope, so that one's a little bit different. Um, Musical Instrument Museum, okay, so that's a little bit different as well, didn't have that one. Um, we had Pueblo Grande, or Grande, yeah, I guess Grande, I don't know. Museum and Archaeological Park. Um, walk through Old Town Scottsdale, it didn't have that. Um, then we have Visit, I don't even know what that is. I, I live in Phoenix. All right, uh, take a hot air balloon ride, which it had that as well. So the results, at least for this test, are relatively similar. You've got a couple different ones, but you've got um, one paragraph essentially for each of those. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is give me eight to 10 paragraphs. Boy, I cannot spell today. Paragraphs on the first item. Speak in personal terms and talk about the time when you recently visited that location. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, and now what I'm gonna ask it to do is I'm gonna ask it to expound on each of those, each of those uh, 10 things. So we'll start the original one first and we'll, then we'll start plus the next and then we're just gonna compare them. Um, we've got actually chat GPT open up. Okay. Um, I don't have personal experience, but I can write in the style of someone who recently visited. All right. I can probably, uh, the desert between the corner based on my training data. All right. And I hate how it does that. It just seems like such a waste. Like, obviously we know you're not a person. Um, it, one issue is I, I should have changed this. Um, I should have done it on the same one. So we've got hike Camelback Mountain and then visit the Desert Botanical Garden. But it is giving me eight to 10 paragraphs about each of those items. So we'll just scroll down, Camelback Mountain. All right. It's just talking about those um, truly immersive experience. My recent visit was a true highlight. It said it couldn't and now it's talking about my recent visit. <laughs> so uh, Ted GPT is just uh, really weird. It's experienced beauty diversity of the Sonora Desert. Um, I was able to see miles in every direction to the east. I could see the province with skyscrapers to the west, the Sonoran Desert, stretched down as far as I could see. All right, this one is actually giving um, more information. Um, talking about personal experience. As I approached the summit, the trail became steeper, more treacherous, large boulders. But these type of views grew more breathtaking. After taking the view of the mountain, I maybe went back down the mountain, retracing my steps. And truthfully, man, um, I, I really like how it added added all of this um, on the original one. So ChatGPT Plus was considerably faster, as you can see. But what we're going to do is I want you to rewrite that with a lot more personality. Share some stories about visiting that location. 
use, let's see, what type of language should we have it use? Um, we could have it, have it use humor, we could have it use sarcasm, we could have it use uh, like death humor, we could have it use, um, use, let's see, conversational, we'll try that, conversational style writing and write like you are telling a friend about the experience. And I didn't spell experience right. All right, so we're gonna go with that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and paste that since speed isn't really that big of a deal right now because we know ChatGPT Plus is way bigger. All right, so, and that, now I've got it. Hey there, I've got a story for you about my recent visit to the Desert Botanical Garden. So it, you notice that it gave that at the beginning this, I'm sorry, but I'm not capable of visiting places, okay? And then now it's going into more detail um, and it's setting the scene. So I arrive at the garden and it's like stepping into another world. The peace and well manicured grounds provide a stark contrast to the rugged beauty of the surrounding desert. All right. Um, and then again, it's giving it more conversational style and write like you're telling a friend about the experience. I decided to take on the Echo Canyon Trail, which is going to be more strenuous of the two trails. Again, if you're going to use this to write information, one, I wouldn't just use straight what it gives you because everyone else is going to do the same thing. But two, you need to make sure, okay, Echo Canyon Trail, is it actually considered more strenuous? Uh, that's something you need to know. I'm not a massive hiker. I live in Phoenix, but I'm not a massive hiker. Um, and then the same thing with this. So we're talking about Desert Discovery Trail. Is that a really a self-guided tour that takes you through the diverse landscapes? You need to know that. Um, the Wildflower Loop, is that a real thing or is ChatGPT just making that up? Um, focus on education research, that's probably true. Um, one for the books, I highly recommend visit. Trust me, it will not disappoint. Okay, finally, after a strenuous hike of about an hour and a half, I made it to the summit. Let me tell you, the view was nothing short of spectacular. I could see for miles in every direction. See, so I could see blah, 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 blah. Okay, so both of these, in my opinion, give about the same type of information, about the same, same style of information. Ultimately, it's really up to you to get the right thing out of any AI software that you're using. If you're using Jasper, if you're using ChatGPT, if you're using anything else to write, to maybe even give you ideas, those sorts of things, it's all about the prompts that you put in, which I've talked about here on my channel before when I've discussed ChatGPT AI tools. It's really all about the prompts. As you can see, I got a considerably different result by asking it to rewrite that with a lot more personality and then share some stories. And the same thing on the original ChatGPT. Now, one thing to keep in mind with ChatGPT Plus versus the original ChatGPT is the fact that with ChatGPT Plus, you get considerably more, um, you don't have to worry about the downtime. Um, so not only is it faster, but you don't have to worry about getting on and it being down, which that happens in a considerable amount. Also, um, OpenAI has said that with ChatGPT Plus, you get the, um, you, you don't run into the limit as much. So there is still a limit. So for example, they don't want you to just automatically be pushing out tons of content with it and using it as an API. They are supposedly gonna re be releasing a ChatGPT API sometime in the future. But as it is now, they don't want you to be using that um, for the $20 a month. They don't want you to be automatically generating content and using say Python or whatever to create that. But the limit is not as strict. So I've run up against the limit multiple times on ChatGPT when I'm just running through the tests and things that shouldn't hopefully happen with normal uses on chat gpt plus now it could but hopefully it shouldn't run up against it as much as you do on the original chat gpt so next i'm going to be talking about in my opinion if it's worthwhile to pay the 20 dollars a month for chat gpt plus so let's ask chat gpt plus if it's worth the 20 dollars a month subscription and i can't don't have personal experiences i know okay here is the main issue with ChatGPT Plus, and truthfully, it's with the original ChatGPT as well. It doesn't know anything new after 2021. And that is why, to me, it's not really worth the $20 subscription unless you use it for your work, for those sorts of things, because the original ChatGPT is still free. Although it's faster, yes, that's nice. If you're truly going through and editing different things, you're going through and working on maybe you're creating an outline for an article and so you're asking it to give you ideas and then you're going back and asking it to give you expound on the different ideas to give you like a general idea of what you what you want to include in the article those sorts of things you really and truly don't need to be paying the twenty dollars a month 
unless you are consistently bumping up against that one hour limit. Now, if I'm going through and creating a video like this and I'm doing some background information, doing some background work, there's been a few times where I've run up against that one hour limit. It does happen, okay? And what it is is ChatGPT or OpenAI, I guess, is they limit how many responses you can get within an hour. Whereas with ChatGPT Plus, they've said that you have double that limit, okay? So although it's still limited, it's not limited to the same amount that you run up against it on the original ChatGPT. So if you're asking ChatGPT to maybe code something and you're constantly asking it to continue the code or write additional code or change the code or whatever, and you're doing a lot of prompts per hour and you're consistently running up against that limit, then I would say the $20 subscription is probably worth it for you. Ultimately, you don't need to pay for the $20 a month because you don't really get anything extra besides the speed and besides increasing that limit. It's not like you get an unfiltered version. It's not like you get a version that is better than the original ChatGPT+. You get essentially two things that are valuable. You get access to it all of the time. So if the original ChatGPT is down, is having issues, they even if it gives you the little pop-up screen that says um, ChatGPT is currently full, which all of us probably experienced that at some point, and try again later, blah, blah, blah. It'll have a little box either at the bottom or down to the side that'll say if you're a ChatGPT Plus member, then you click here, it'll send you a link so you can get it. So you'll never have a time where you won't be able to access ChatGPT if you're play, paying the $20 a month subscription cost for the Plus. Secondly, the speed. Okay, speed isn't a huge factor, but if you're using ChatGPT Plus to write code, those sorts of things, it may be worth it for you for it to spit out that code considerably faster. You'll be able to do whatever you're working on. Maybe you're creating a calculator or you're creating a, a plugin or those sorts of things with ChatGPT. You will be able to do it much faster with ChatGPT Plus. I would say the results are between 20 to 40% faster from my experience and the testing that I've done using Plus. It's 20 to 40%. So if you're able to decrease the amount of time you spend on programming and on coding by 20 to 40%, if you normally would spend, let's say 40 hours, you decrease it by 40%, that means it's gonna save you 16 hours of work over the original ChatGPT. So that's a pretty massive gain for only costing you $20 a month. But most people, myself included, aren't gonna be using it like that. There's gonna be a few, few people who are. So in that case, it'd be worth it for you. And then, of course, the fact that ChatGPT Plus gives you access to it and doesn't give you the network errors and those sorts of things because it lists you as a priority. Okay? So over all the people who are using it for free, you're going to get priority. I was using uh, ChatGPT, the original one yesterday, was going through and doing some things with it and creating some outlines and doing some testing for some videos and those sorts of things. And I continually ran into network errors with it. And what it was was... Quite simply, ChatGPT was just overloaded. There was too many people on it trying to do it. And so what it was doing was I would get network errors, it would time me out, it would cut off in the middle of a sentence, it would do all these sorts of things that it wouldn't normally do. There was even times where I asked it to continue and it, cre and it created like two sentences and then just stopped, like it thought it was done for some reason. So then I had to say continue writing from where you left off again and then it continued writing and then it did that a few different times. And it's just because it, so many people were on it at that time. So if you're constantly experiencing those issues and you're using it for something besides just, you know, for fun or those sorts of things, then $20 a month truthfully is probably worth it for you. Now for me, I am probably not going to spend the continue to spend the $20 a month subscription. Obviously, I did it for this video, so that way I could show it to you guys, show you guys the differences, um, those sorts of things. But for me, it's really not worth the $20 a month. Now, if the original ChatGPT degrades, which is possible, OpenAI might degrade that experience, or as more and more people pile into the original ChatGPT, it could the experience could degrade degrade to such a point where it makes a lot of sense for you to spend the $20 a month. Ultimately, though, that's a decision that only you can make. How do you use it? What do you use it for? Is that a little bit faster, 20 to 40% faster, gonna save you enough time that it makes that $20 a month worth it? Only you can make that decision. Only you can decide that for yourself. That is truthfully the only way to know is, I can't 
decide for you if it's worth it. I can decide for me if I feel it's worth it, but I can't make that decision for you because only you know your use case and how you intend to use it. And everyone's different. If you're using it to, you're putting it, putting in information and then you're using that information to give it, have it give a summary or something like that, then paying the $20 a month so you can continue to do those over and over and over again might be worth it for you. But if you're just using it to goof around or maybe to play games with or those sorts of things, then the $20 a month might not be worthwhile. Ultimately, it is up to you to make that decision. It's I can't and truly no one can make that decision for you. Again, my name is Matt. I'm from Super Niche Sites. I hope this video has been helpful to you, giving you an example so you can hopefully figure out and decide if ChatGPT Plus is worthwhile comparing side by side with the speeds and what the outputs look like, if it's any different, which it's really not, and then for you to help decide if that subscription price is worthwhile. I hope you have a great rest of your day.